Welcome to the Elliot Hulse Podcast. Podcast. I am the king of making men strong. Shedding of the old man, right? The way we can freely walk into rising, ascending, cleansing, sanctifying our soul for it's the Yo Elliot God. Show. I like that. If you're a high achieving businessman, executive, or entrepreneur who's dominating in business but struggle with drinking, drugs, overeating, or any filthy vice, here's some advice. The biggest mistake that you could make is to try to quit cold turkey and use willpower to overcome your cravings. If you've ever quit for a few days or a few weeks only to self sabotage by binging worse than before, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. Not only has my company helped thousands of men destroy vice and dominate life, I personally confronted and overcome the same struggles when I found myself hooked on weed at the peak of my business career. If you've got four minutes to listen to a coach who will help you achieve total self-mastery and control over your inner punk, then listen up. If you don't beat drinking, drugs, or any life-draining dependency in 90 days or less, not only will my company give you your money back, we'll pay for your first month's stay at a rehab retreat of your choice. That's what you need to succeed. So let's go, bro. Just visit waronvice.com fill out an application and my team will get back to you with the details hope to see you on the inside done yo bros we're back with another yo elliot show formerly known as the elliot host podcast or still the elliot host podcast but we've been having some amazing guests lately and i was blessed to have a new guest here that i caught wind of on youtube just a few months ago his name's david hammond and he's on a team of making men strong again just like you and me and so, David, thank you for joining me. Absolutely. Yes, sir. It's, it's a pleasure, guys. Honestly, when I met Elliot or I saw him out in the parking lot, I just had a, uh, the first thing I noticed was he looks a lot younger in person. I was expecting him to look a lot older, a lot wiser. And I would say, you know what, maybe like 38 years old. So he's got that youthful spirit. I can see that after all these years. And I'm excited to speak. David, you are a youthful man, too. You got that youthful vigor. And you're using that to make men strong again, young men strong in the world today. Mm -hmm. Uh, where there's so many challenges, I noticed that a lot of your videos are around sexual dynamics, intersexual dynamics, dealing with women, no fat, stuff like that. What got you into it? Yeah, great question. So to begin, you know, I started my self-development journey at around 15 years old. And by the way, guys, I have quite a bit of caffeine in me, so I'm going to be calm. If you notice I'm speaking quick, I'll try to slow down. At 15 years old, you know, I... um. Uh, for lack of better terms, was kind of like the outcast, the black sheep, where, you know, I noticed a lot of guys my age were smoking, drinking, partying, et cetera, et cetera. And I just knew actually to backtrack that the inception, now I'm bringing it full circle to you, was my dad died at 14 years old and I entered a, a, a massive depression, right? I was very lost. I was confused. I was my father figure. And the year after I found you on YouTube, from that point on, I decided, you know what, this is game over. Let's go from 15. I'm now 25 years old. It's been an entire, an entire self-development journey. Once I hit around the age of 18, the natural step after, of course, understanding dynamics was let's try no fat. It's just the natural step of self-development. So from that to 21, trial and error, I finally got it at 21 after three years of experimenting. And then from 21 to now being 25, four years, it stuck. What I ended up doing was I made a video of no fat after a year, uh, multiple years back. And it, it, that was the one that cracked. That's the one that went viral after being on YouTube for five years so i didn't make a single cent it was my fifth year and i would never give up i knew i was like i'm going to make it there's no question and you heavily inspired that seeing you on youtube i knew what i wanted to do finally that video cracked uh maybe a couple about a million views or so and that just spiraled everything you know helping men with no fat that's where it started retention but further than that that was kind of a catalyst to open up the whole realm of masculinity that's where i really began to understand sexual dynamics um understanding god purpose the whole vision of what it is to be a man and as i'm still young i'm learning that myself but it's such an amazing journey now being uh like i said mid 20 so Hopefully that can answer your question. <laughs> yeah, so you grew up in a generation when you guys had ample access to lots of porn right in the pocket of your pants, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. Uh, when I was a kid, the only time we saw porn was either if we were stealing a VHS tape from our dads or uh, sneaking into the into the grocery store and yeah. stealing it from behind the counter. Yeah. Uh, that is really scary. And I think more men are discovering just how bad it is. But you figured it out pretty early on, coupled with 
the elimination of masturbation, mm. uh, what spawned that in you? Uh, that wasn't a thing uh, related to s personal development when I was coming up. Right, great question. So I think naturally, now that the manosphere has grown so wide, there's almost like a checklist of things to do in the self-development realm. So right, let's say in the beginning, it's going to the gym. Maybe after that, it's getting your mindset right. And I think one of the later steps is NoFap. That's just, it's like, if you think of a video game, right? That's one of the natural bosses to tackle. And every single man, regardless of who you are, because of the widespread information, wants to tackle that. So I think at 18, I knew this was the next step. I could feel this, the call to adventure, right? And it took me three years, like I said. At that time, keep in mind, there were no YouTubers right? Speaking of here's what to do with no fat, here's how to overcome it. So it was three years from 18 to 21 of just pure trial and error. All right, what's working for me? What are my triggers? Okay, this worked, this didn't work. And then finally at 21, I, I kind of like documented my journey saying, hey guys, you know, here are my, here's what works, kind of the blueprint. And from that, it's helped a lot of men. Um, so yeah, you're a hundred percent right. You know, it's only getting worse. And I think that's just because society now is, uh, really targeting that towards men. I mean, it, it always has worked, you know, like the, the downfall of Rome or any uh, civilizations have happened because of the rampant availability of sex or just, uh, decadence. Right. So of course, uh, as men, you really have to take that into your own hands because if you do not, by default, you will move into degeneracy. If you're not constantly going to the gym or tackling this head on, it will, kill you. There's no question about it. It's not a 50-50. It's either you fight back or it's overtaking you, period. There's no gray area. At least what I believe. So what is so bad then uh, about pornography and masturbation? I think you use the term PMO. That's what I hear people saying. Or masturbation, orgasm, PMO. Right. Yeah. What's the big deal? What do you say to someone who's like, well, it's just sexual freedom. I'm just, uh, it's natural. I'm making myself feel good. Yep. I got to do it. Otherwise, you know, I'm going to freak out. Absolutely. Great question. So I think that along with other things being um, so no fat, maybe cold showers, intermittent fasting, like you say, it's interjecting a sense of austerity or a, or a sense of pain that wakes you up as a man, right? Uh, again, I'm going to quote a lot of things that I've learned from you and, and a lot of, I mean, you're really one of my greatest mentors, you with, with some other men, there's, there has to be a form of initiation. And if there is no form of initiation, which is you now creating the pain because society will not create that austerity, right? We don't get taken out of our our, our our tribe, whatever it may be, to go through those challenges. So NoFap is a sense of initiation and you have to initiate that because like I said, because our world is moving in a certain direction, if you do not initiate these levels of pain, it's not going to happen. You will be a man child to the day you die. I coached a lot of men 20, 30, 40, 50 years old and I can see it in their eyes that they crave this level of initiation and because they didn't have it, that boyhood within them is still prevalent. So that's why I recommend it to every single man. Once you get around the age of 15, you see the hero's call to adventure. I truly believe overcoming no fap is one of those hurdles. You have to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. So how does one go about doing that? Let's say uh, I'm a young man and I've been beaten off to screens for the past five years and I hear this conversation and I'm, I'm intrigued. I want to take that call to adventure. Uh, it seems really hard. What do I do? How do I make that happen? Absolutely. So the steps that's coming to the top of my mind that I would definitely recommend for you is number one, I want you more, I don't know what camera to look at. I want you first and foremost to have a why. This is very important. Okay. So me, myself, you know, I'm Christian. I think all men should be religious, uh, spiritual at the very least. And the reason I say that is because without a Northern star, all your efforts will become aimless. There has to be an aim. I don't care what you do, right? Like you say, it's it's not what you do, it's who you are when you do it. So if you have that Northern Star at the beginning, and I'll actually, as we prolong the conversation, I've now been on monk mode, which is like the next step of that, right? So full wow. celibacy, uh, no drugs, no alcohol, no dating, nothing for almost about a year now. The, the way I survived on that is because, you guys can call this a little corny or cheesy if you want, but I prayed to God and I said, look, man, I'm a little scared. I know what's about to come. I have never gone this long before, guide me. So what I did at the very beginning is I had a direction. I created a Northern Star that allowed me to have the vision. And if you don't have that Northern Star with no fat, you're going to fail. I don't care what it is. You can have the best strategies, tools, tactics, understandings, right? Even with female nature, if you don't have that mission or that star, everything you do will fail, right? So create a mission. Why do you want this? If you don't know why you want it, I don't care what you do. It's not going to happen. Well, you mentioned that you're a Christian. How does this relate to being Christian and how is that your northern star? Great. So 
as I delve and I learn more into Christianity, Jesus himself, right? There's, there's the lineage, the hierarchy of man. I truly believe all religions were created by man for man to give man a blueprint, a structure. Because if men, like I said, don't have that northern arrow, that star to shoot at, everything you do will move downwards into, de into degeneracy. There's two ways you go. You either go up, you go down. If people think I'm chilling in the middle, that's false. You're going down, period. Because the world's evolving. So to answer your question, be like Christ. Christ was a sinless man. He was the perfect man, right? be as perfect as that. Um, if you can aspire towards certain religions, for me, that's, that's men like Christ or maybe more tangible mentor figures, you're able to have that northern arrow, right? Jesus says it's better to cut off your own arm, your right hand, than it is to enter hell with both arms, right? So we don't have to get too uh, into nitty gritty, but all religion is what I'm coming to realize as I get older, all life is, is essentially sacrifice for the greater good. And that's a scary thought. I, I know you've, you're, you're very well versed into this. As I'm now mid-20s, I'm realizing I think everything we've been taught as men has been wrong, has been false. Yeah. So you quoted Jesus in that cutting off your right arm. That would probably help a lot of young men with their fapping addictions. Uh, that's maybe a place to start. But maybe let's talk technically, right? So I wake up every morning and I've got this raging boner. And, uh, you know, I don't know anything but how to blow it out. Yep. Um, how do you, as a young man, deal with that? Your testosterone's bubbling up real strong and, uh, you know, temptations are all over the place and, you know, it's so accessible. What do I, what do I physically do or how do I, ment what mental strategies are there to help me overcome my, my impulse yep. to blow that load? <clears throat> Yeah, amazing question. So you do exactly what I'm doing right now, and that's just to essentially do nothing, to be calm. Like you guys may see on camera, I don't know if you can tell, I have a whole bunch of emotions going in me right now. Underslept, overcaffeinated, a little nervous, <laughs> uh, lots of thoughts in my head. Satan's been attacking me tons as of late. There's a lot of doubt. I don't know if you could tell that on camera or not. The reason I'm saying that is because just because you feel things doesn't mean you have to do things, right? That's very important. So to answer your question, I wake up with a raging boner every single day of my life, <laughs> right? It happens. That's life. I've been on retention now for almost a year. Um, wow. So let me get this straight. Yeah. So you haven't blown your load in over a year? About. About 10 months. Wow. That's yeah. amazing. So there are those who say, wow, that got to be bad for you. You're going to get prostate yeah. cancer. You're all clogged up. Mm -hmm. What do you say to those people? I say your body will naturally take care of itself through wet dreams. So uh. you don't need to worry about that. I get that all the time. A lot of guys will have the cope. And the idea that, oh, you know, that's <laughs> false. You know, you have to do this. And my answer to that is absolutely no, you don't. These are the same guys who haven't made it past 30 days. Your body will auto-regulate auto itself, similar to you taking a dump, right? Like, if your body needs to excrete, it will excrete. It doesn't need, it really doesn't need you to do anything. If it needs to throw up, if there's something like the beauty of our body, I've, I've in the past when I competed, I, I took too much caffeine, right? Uh, <laughs> your body will throw up. I didn't have to do anything to do that. I didn't have to stick my finger down my throat. It will naturally happen. So to answer your question, guys, I want you to make it at least one month. And I truly believe now that it's been a year, I feel amazing, man. When I get too built up with energy, which the majority of you guys are not, that's, that's a lie. If I haven't ejaculated in about three weeks and I can feel that test and I'm about to explode, I will more than likely have a wet dream that night. And now to some people, they may think, oh, that's a relapse. You failed. No, in my opinion, that is God's way of saying, all right, let's tone it down a little bit and yeah. then let's build back up. And through that, you can go essentially forever. So you'll be fine. Don't use that excuse. That's a cope. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. like that. That's pretty cool. So uh, you do a lot of things uh, uh, with regard to teaching uh, young men about women as well. Yeah. And uh, you're celibate. At the moment, yes. You've chosen to be celibate. You're in monk mode. Yeah. So not only are you refraining from uh, screen sex and blowing your load, you're also refraining from uh, fornicating, chasing women. Um, tell us a little bit about that. As a, as a young man, raging with testosterone, yep. how do you hold yourself accountable? And you're a good-looking guy, too. I mean, you got a lot of charisma. Thanks. How do you hold yourself accountable uh, with so much temptation? Out there? Yeah, amazing question. So like I said at the very beginning, guys, I want you to all have northern stars because when you have a northern star, everything else will follow, right? So to answer that question, you're 100% right. I'm a young guy, mid-20s, very high test. I work out. I go to a gym with a lot of pretty attractive women. I mean, we can hit this from so many angles. I want you guys to genuinely understand and ask yourself what is not only best for yourself, but the greater good of humanity. Be like Christ. Christ died for everybody, right? 
So if you can begin to look at figures, whether that is maybe, I don't know, your father, like Martin Luther King, whoever it may be, you begin to study and realize that these men really didn't do anything for themselves. You know, them being blessed, Matthew 6, 33 is one of my favorite uh, parables in the Bible. First seek God and all his righteousness and everything shall be added to you. So if you can build the kingdom, you'll be fine. You'll meet great people. You'll be okay financially. I truly believe you'll be okay. But you have to really send it. That's what I mean by send it. You have to send it. You know what your mission is as a man. Every man BSs and they say they don't. You know it. And one of the tools that will help you get there is retention. Whether that be through celibacy. Right, so to give you a bit of backstory, just to be quick, I was in a relationship for five years. I was planning on marrying this girl uh, from 19 to 24 and then about 10 months ago. And if you guys see me shaking, I'm cold. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm a little, I'm a little uh, shaky. Well, you're a Canadian. You should be able to handle yeah, this. It's just I, a little nippy here. Yeah, bro. I don't know what happened, guys. I drank a lot of re- energy drinks. I think I think the shirt's a little too tight, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, though, um, yeah, as, as I warm up. You're on I was fire, in, buddy. I was in a relationship for five years. Great woman. I was planning on marrying her. And then about 10 months ago, she left. Uh, we could blame, you know, feminism, Satan, whatever it may be. But it didn't happen. It wasn't in God's will, I guess. So it didn't happen. And then from that point on, I had two options. And this is what I recommend to all men. Either one, I could go back down into degeneracy, right? Hook up with women, go to parties, clubs, et cetera, et cetera. But I knew I wouldn't do that. I was too far evolved at that point in my self-development journey. So then the, the, the later step, which is kind of what I was a little afraid of, was celibacy. And I said, God... Almost like Jesus, right? Can you take this cup away from me if it's not your will? Yeah. I I said, hey, man, I'm a little queasy right now. I basically said, hey, God, look, I have a feeling you're asking me to do this. I'm a little nervous because I've never gone this long before. If this is from you, though, just help me out. And I kid you guys not. I mean, this is a complete different topic. We'll get further into it. But I believe uh, God, the Holy Spirit, gives you gifts. And I overcame lust. I couldn't tell you how it happened. It just happened. I don't struggle with lust. I do not struggle with temptation. That's a lie. We all get tempted, but those nine months were significantly easier than I ever could have thought. And I believe there are many reasons for that. I transmutated the energy into more productive things, being mission, which is very important. Number two, though, it was my sentiment. What did I say at the very beginning of this podcast? What is your northern star? If you have that northern star, you're going to be okay because everything else will follow that. So set the prayer, set the intention. That's very important. And so uh, you keep saying northern star and... uh, as a Catholic, the Northern Star is to become a saint. That's what okay. the goal is, to become a saint. Um, I'm just curious. I noticed you have a crucifix yeah. around your neck. O- only Catholics wear crucifixes. Yeah, so that's a great question. I'm still relatively new-ish to Christianity. I've been delving into it for the, about the past year and a half or so. Only as of recently have I really began to learn more in it. Ignore this. this. I'll be completely honest when no, I No, we can't it. ignore that. Okay. How do you ignore Christ crucified on the cross and Fair enough. N- between your tits? 100%. Don't ignore it in that sense. When I got it, funny enough, this is very like sacrilegious. I actually used to wear a rosary around my neck, which I know is, is, is frowned upon. I think when I was getting into it, I needed those very bold symbols to remind me yeah. of the mission and then as i get further along and i and i learn more things like that then yeah i can change the nitty gritties things like that i wouldn't consider my i would not consider myself necessarily a catholic i would just consider myself a christ follower i think that's what christianity is like as i read more in the bible i realize that jesus for the most part was not a huge fan of religions like christianity in and of itself isn't even a religion christ says follow me right so yeah whether yeah, maybe I'll change this in the future, but um, I've never been more interested in Christianity than ever before. I've been I've binge watching just for you guys out there. I think Mark the Messenger is great, but two, there's a guy named Cleveland Street Preachers where he just goes on the street and just debates people, just like he goes to colleges or universities, kind of like what I'm doing. And he knows the Bible back and front. He knows other religions. And when people debate, like, what about this? What do you mean? Love thy neighbor, A, B, C, D. He, this guy flips it on your back. It's amazing. I have... Um, it, it really is fascinating, and I've learned so much. And Have you seen my catechesis series I've started? Little bits, yeah. Or okay, the cool. interviews you do with like the other men? the other. It's a series mm-hmm. on ca- the catechism of the Catholic Church so that there's an understanding of Christ's church. He did establish it through Peter, mm-hmm. and he did want to have a body. It, he didn't expect Catholic, uh, Christianity to be sort of amorphous, sort of subjective, my relationship. Mm-hmm. But... Regardless, I want to come back to Northern Stars. You keep saying that, and I know you're a Christian, Christ follower. Uh, so what, do, what is that Northern Star? What are you actually aiming at? So David's Northern Star, at least as of right now, this is to, number one, 
I think all men need to get on monk mode. If you're single as a man, you get on monk mode. What is monk mode? This is celibacy. This is no dating, no dating apps, no drugs, no alcohol. This is really just increasing your spiritual connection to God. And through God, that is your mission. That's your vocation. That's everything. So my northern star right now is getting on monk mode, which I've been on now for about 10 months time. Through that, you will grow physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And then I believe just like in the Garden of Eden, right, Adam and Eve, God will send you a wife when the time is right. Oh. So I actually wanted to, we can talk more about this later on, but um, now that's I the get next it. step. You're doing it for girls. <laughs> No, not necessarily. I think though, like just like in the Bible, right? Like no man should be alone for too long. I think yeah. there's a good quote and it goes, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. So when you're quick, you're a young buck. I think the majority of you men should be single. I don't think there's any logistical reason for you to be in a relationship because you have yet to discover who you are as a man. But I think long-term now, yeah, I think you're in your forties, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, you're going to have a family. There needs to be that base because one thing I will tell you guys right now is that, um, you know, this is kind of like a maybe an analogy, but like the closer you are to God, I believe the closer the devil is to you too. Um, and when you're by yourself, no man should be alone for too long. You got to be careful Amen. because you can start thinking irrationally. Yeah. And that's me. So I think by having a wife, a God sent wife, she can ground you to be like, let's check yourself a little bit. So I got a good friend who, who does that, but I've been alone. I live alone now. It's been almost a year. I've grown tremendously, but um, you have to be careful, man. You can't be alone for that long because you, spiritual warfare, <laughs> got to be strong with you. So I think long-term, yeah, have a good woman, man, who can ground you, keep you based. And if you'd like to have a family after that, you know, by all means, go for it. And so you had a, a Instagram reel recently that went viral. I thought it was pretty cool. It's got over a million views. And it says, don't chase women or something like that, right? Don't, don't go after women. Don't speak to women. Uh, and your your message essentially was, be the best you and God will send a woman to you. 100%. So yeah, my most viral TikTok in real was, uh, do, I'll say it right now, <laughs> do not approach women. And I do the I thing, right? Yeah. And yes, yeah, so that cracked around like, yeah, 2 million views on both. And that's kind of what spiraled the Instagram. And the reason I believe that, right? Matthew 6.33, Adam and Eve. I mean, again, you don't even have to get Christian, just biologically through nature. If you're a man in your early 20s, mid 20s, again, I've coached over a thousand men, so I, I, I don't care. You're not special. If you do not have the base that you've built, the legacy, the lineage, the corporation, there's no need for helpmates. Why do you need a helpmate? You don't even have your own established business. You can't be on your own two feet yet. Now, I'm not saying that she can't help. Of course she can. But if you don't first have at least something, how can women, women are, women are beautiful. They're like spice. How can you have cinnamon on your coffee if you first don't yet have coffee? Are you just going to drink cinnamon? And I think this is what most men do. They get trapped in this effeminate trap where, but it doesn't matter. I don't need coffee. I don't need my business. I don't need my fitness. I don't need spiritual connection. Just give me the girl, right? And this is actually why I'm doing a podcast with you. My entire industry, for the most part, the red pill community, I'm against. And the reason I'm against that is because they're teaching you the wrong things. They're teaching mm. you what it would, idolatry. They're teaching you to idolize women. That's wrong. I've, I've, the older I get, the more I realize how far these men are leading you guys astray. And I know on paper it sounds good. It's like what the devil does, right? It gives you a little bit of truth, right? Oh, you know, it doesn't matter. It's okay. A, B, C, D. You have no clue what you're getting yourself into. If you are not based as a man, you want me to pull up stats? We know the divorce rate. We know uh, the stat of nuclear families is less than 20% now in America, I believe. Relationships are crumbling. So you're telling me, you know, just go with the girl, do A, B, C, D. But you damn well know what will happen from that. And most men actually don't know. So I think you listening to based YouTubers like myself, Elliot, there's really only a couple of us that tell you, you know what? Hold off a little bit. Build yourself back up. And when it is time, God will create your Eve. You don't have to worry about that. Could be a year. Could be three years. Could be five years. And this is what I tell men too. You have to be ready to be single uh, to the day you die. I truly believe that. What do you say to people who argue that, well, you need practice with women? <laughs> I love I, I'm so happy you brought that up. I get that. That is my biggest criticism is, well, no, David, you know, that's false. They say, uh, you should be approaching women. You should be talking to them all the time because you need um, that practice, like you said. And my answer to that is I understand that logic 100%. I think that's a very faulty logic, and I'm going to tell you why. If you're a man on semen retention, you know how to speak to women. And this is what men keep forgetting. We are biological, okay? Let's forget all the fairy tales that you tell yourself in your head. Let's come back to biology, your meat and potatoes. We would not have evolved this far 
if we didn't at a subconscious level understand how to speak to each other. So you're telling me, and I understand it sounds good on paper, but I have to practice BS. You know what's funny? After this, we're going to colleges and universities to speak to women. I haven't spoken to a woman in like the dating sense in about a year. Trey can attest, I can speak to women. That is not an issue, but I'm not practicing. You tell me why. Because I'm holding my nut. That's why. And I know where my intentions are. Really? In fact. So let me see if I understand this. Yep. That by retaining your semen, you become a better communicator with women? Absolutely. Just by default? At, at, at 100%. Um, how does that happen? Because you're a man and they're a woman. And let me tell you why. Because as you gain your masculine essence, by default, subconsciously, they submit to their feminine frame. And that's the most beautiful thing. I, I've, I've enjoyed these interviews so much with women because they can feel that I'm there to love them. I'm here to protect you. You're in a safe place. Um, but I want to understand why do you think this way? And I'm not rehearsing this. I'm not going to get practice. This is why I'm against pickup. I'm against you guys writing down your pickup lines, your dating. That's all beta. That's all wrong. Don't do that. You're a man. You have two nuts. Matthew 6, Search this up after this podcast. First seek God and all his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Build yourself. You don't need... If you'd like to go talk to women, absolutely, that's fine. But here's why I said do not approach women because the majority of you men, not only have been fed a lie, you're coming at it from the wrong sentiment. What do I mean by this? need lack what can i gain from you yeah. when i do these interviews if you s and what do i mean by need sex remove sex right if i'm going to these women i number one i'm not looking for sex i'm celibate if you say no no problem completely fine the next girl comes i'm coming with that confidence which is unattachment hey how are you doing right if you want to talk cool if not no problem that's, that's completely fine and you can feel this guy didn't need anything. And because he didn't need anything, I'm willing to talk. Do you know how many girls' numbers I've gotten after? The, the amount of DMs, Instagram followers, hey, what? You, nothing. And the irony is I wasn't looking to do that. How bizarre. Mm. How funny. I've never picked up more girls by not wanting to pick up girls. But most men, what do they do? They tell you the opposite. And by going with that needy essence of how can I get you? Can you please sleep with me? You ruin everything because that's not how men are. Men chase God. Women chase men. That's the evolution of nature. That's divine law. God, man, woman, child. And there's nothing sexist about that. That is how we've evolved thus far. I truly believe women chase men. I truly believe women choose men. Why? Let's, let's put us in the wild right now. Let's say hypothetically you're a woman, I'm a man, okay? We're in the wild. No political ABCD. We're butt naked in the wild. Who needs who more? Why do I need you? I have logic. I'm stronger. I'm faster. Bigger lung capacity. I can form tribes, hierarchies. What do I need you for? Women need men. And I don't say that in a sexist way at all. I love relationships. I was in a relationship for five years. I was raised by a single mom for the majority of my life. That is the most loving thing you can do. Why? Because women are a delicacy. They're a prize. Only if you first have your ish together as a man, which is bringing everything together full circle. Right? So when God sends you your wife, if he does, if it's in his will, amazing. She's a compliment to my life. But I didn't chase you. I didn't need you. I wasn't looking. When God created Adam, did he say, hey, Adam, go look for Eve, buddy? He had no clue there was such a thing as Eve. I saw this from one of your podcasts, actually, Rob Kowalski, I believe. Mm -hmm. That's where I learned that from. I was like, that is so true. Adam had no clue there was such a thing as Eve. What did God say? Tend to the garden. Do your work. Get on monk mode. Do what's in front of you. And you know what happened? Eventually, Adam did a good enough job for a long enough time that God said, you know what? You seem a little lonely, buddy. Eve. Welcome to manhood, guys. There's your answer. And this is what I'm trying to bring to the world, which my community hates. Do you know how many people I'll put out of business if I say this? My community hates me. So who is your community? Right. I noticed, I watched a, uh, a video recently where you spoke of uh, starting in 2020 with your YouTube videos. And you said that there was a batch of men that began speaking to young men. And you, you sort of differentiated yourself from them. And you got to forgive me. I sort of live under a rock. Yeah, I don't know who the others sure. are. Absolutely. So I'm not going to name any names per se. Oh, name names. <laughs> My community has a bunch of individuals who I blew up with um, at 2020. And, uh, you know, I'm sure these guys mean well, but I'm completely against my entire Red Pill community. I make fun of them. I don't like them. They don't like me. They actually, more than like, they make fun of me. Like all of them, bro. They, they kind of create reels against me, which is completely fine. I love it. In fact, I reached out to a lot of them to get on a podcast with them. I'll turn me down, of course. That, that's how it works. People don't like when you disagree with them. And these men... They have false gods. That's the best way I can put it. They're leading you down a road to degeneracy. And the problem with that is you will not be fulfilled as a man. And not only that, because like I said, as I learned what it is to be a man, it's, it's bigger than yourself. You're leading your woman down degeneracy, your child down degeneracy, society down to degeneracy. 
So you tell me how that's masculine. How are you a male self-development YouTuber when you're bringing everyone to hell? But no one wants to talk about that. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, these guys are feminists in disguise. They don't recognize that by following the promptings of the sexual revolution, so-called, it's really a de-evolution, de uh, they're feeding into the power dynamic toppling that is natural between men and women. Because like you said very eloquently, men are not designed to chase women. But when they know they're getting free sex, that's what they're doing. Yeah, 100%. It's all backwards. Right. But you wouldn't know that unless you're in the sphere, which is why now, you know, I'll be completely honest with you guys, I've actually kind of transitioned more to like Reels and TikTok because I have my YouTube channel. I've been doing that. Maybe it'll crack again. That's fine. Views have gone down by like 60%. And I truly believe that's because they say in the end times, everyone's going to want to have tickling ears. No one's going to want to hear the truth. Right. Nobody wants to hear what I say anymore mm -hmm. because what does that mean? I got to give up a lot of stuff. Right. Right. So what I'm doing now is I'm saying, you know what? Fine. I'll have that for the guys who agree, like kind of like the disciples. There's not, not many. I'm going to come to you guys. You can't hide. I'll come to Reels. I'll come to TikTok. I'm coming for you. And that's what the do not approach women was. And that's what the Reels are. So I'm, you got to be wise as a serpent, right? So I'm crafting the messages in ways that penetrate them where they can't hide, but it still interjects it. Yeah. I think I see you as a, a sign of the times, the turning of the tides and a, a part of the zeitgeist. I, I'm noticing that your generation is, for the first time since I've been alive, there's a generation that is become so degenerate that the table, that the pendulum is actually swinging, and there's a, a strong faction of you who are choosing monk mode, who yeah. are who are who are choosing uh, a life of virtue as opposed to being steeped in the vice. What's that all about? How's that? How's that? Uh, how is that unfolding? What do you think? That's what's going on there. Yeah, amazing question. So I've been thinking about this myself a lot too. I do believe um, and this might trigger some of you guys, but I, I think we're in the end times, or at least close to that. Um, I think a lot of things right now are so evident. I mean, Bibles prophesy so much of this stuff. The more I learn, right in the end times, they say children will disrespect their parents, and like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just just take a right. look. Right, there's so much stuff. So even, you know, I, I know you know this. The whole. Um, idea of, you know, strong, hard times create strong men, strong men create good times, et cetera, et cetera. Everything's changing right now. That's all it is, you know. And the reason I've tripled down to influencing the youth is because I realized, you know, sad enough, men my age for the most part, a lot of them have given up. Mid-20s, a lot of them. There's, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. And a lot of these guys, no matter what I say, it's hard. Or if I get an 18-year-old, a 19-year-old, a 17-year-old who's still fresh, but he has that vigor and fight in him, I can tweak you. And that's what I do at my gym. They're, oh my goodness, it's insane. I joke around and I say, you guys are my friends. And they're all like 17, 18, but they're loyal and they'll listen. They're like, David, teach me everything. Powerlifting, religion, Christianity. What is the matrix? Everything. They want to know. And that's, that's our fighting force as men. So funny enough with TikTok and Reels, I've actually completely switched gears now instead of older men to younger men because I don't want to say I've given up on the older guys, but like... Yes, well, you'll I'm, always have greater influence over those who are younger than you. And you're still really young. Yeah. You know, don't give up on the 25 year olds yeah. and the, because those are who I'm speaking to. Mm -hmm. And I haven't given up on them. Yeah. It's just that you're better placed to, to speak to the teenagers. Yeah. A hundred percent. And and that's why, like I said, like I have the YouTube, which is now much more of like for the older guys who are willing to stay, but the young guys who don't want that, which I understand it's TikTok generation. I'm coming to you. <laughs> Mm -hmm. you can't yeah. Hide, buddy. yeah and you're doing a pretty good job with it I'm trying yeah yeah so that's that that's that yeah boom this is great topics man this is what i live for you know but it's it's very tricky to speak of these things especially you know where i live because it's uh i almost feel like i i'm, I'm speaking to like a blank wall no you're not speaking to a blank wall your videos have uh, five thousand views plus which is uh it's representative of an audience imagine five thousand people walked in here right now yeah, that'd be quite a bit of people. And so I think your message is maybe a little ahead of its time. I agree. Right. You're, you're on the cutting edge. You might not realize that, but if you keep going, it's only going to be the sky the limit for you. Uh, and that's and that's actually why I keep doing it. And I keep saying, I keep like prophesizing to each one, like my time's coming again. There's no question about it. And I think you and I, I think men who follow this righteous path are a little, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They can almost like predict the future a bit. I went on YouTube for five years because I knew I was going to make it. Five years of not seeing anything. I didn't make a single cent. 
but I had a feeling that I was going to make it. Well, it's the same feeling I have now. Did you always have the same message? So I wanted, to, it's very funny, right? The hero's call to adventure. I started, you were the mentor figure, and then I entered the special world. And that special world was not necessarily, so that's what I wanted to do, what you did at the beginning. But instead of coming all the way around, that was my trial and error. That was starting businesses, fitness, photography, videography. That was getting smacked on my face. That was being broke. That was going through job, this, 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 this. So was I preaching that message? Not necessarily. I was kind of documenting my journey. And then around like the fourth or fifth year, I guess when God said, okay, now you're ready through all those experiences, right? The elixir, the this, the trolls, the dragons, everything. I finally got it and it cracked. And the second it cracked, I went from like zero to a hundred thousand subscribers in like four months. And it just, and it just kept going. Um, so it's all in God's timing, really. Um, so no, my message was not always the same, but as of now, from the inception of that to now, it's only gotten stronger. Again, you need that Northern star. As you get older as men, this is the next logical step. I know this kind of seems a little far-fetched when I say this because, oh, it's like, you're 24. What do you know? You guys just go to clubs. Wrong. False. You will learn all of this when you get on monk mode, when you begin to detach. This is very, really what I speak of detach from the matrix, right? The matriarch, the, the effeminacy, the illusion. And when you detach from that and you tone with father, which is a lot of this stuff I've learned from you, right? As is you really learn based men, all these answers shall be given to you. So in the most practical sense, how to help you guys out, right? Because I know I'm kind of speaking in tongues we're all over the place. You want it very practical, right? Keep it solution-based. If you see my reels, you know what I'm going to say. Every man by default, including myself, you were all plugged into the matrix. Now, what does this matrix mean? The matrix in its simplest forms is degeneracy, is what society wants, is effeminacy, drugs, alcohol, overweight, sedate yourself. And it's myriad of forms. What is this? What is the repercussions? No families, control. You get the picture. Bad. As a man, it is your responsibility. Here's your initiation to purposefully, intentionally, you unplug yourself. What does that look like? Monk mode. When you get on monk mode and you decide, you know what? I need more for myself. I can't be doing this anymore. I believe God then instills gifts, traits, virtues, and strengths to you to then come back out. So there's your answer. That's exactly what you do. I've made it very clear. Can can a man do this without reliance on God? Great question. Wow. <laughs> I love this because I don't have guys ask me this stuff. It's like I just talk to myself the whole day. I don't have mm -hmm. guys like dig that deep. Um, to answer your question, so I've, I've talked about this too. No, all men are religious by nature. Every single man. Even if you don't believe in what necessarily this figure is. The word religion, I think I've learned this from you, it translates to realign, realign with creator. Every man is born religious. Women are not, men are. The reason for that is because men move vertically, hierarchy. Who is above you as man? God the Father, the epitome of men. But they'll say, oh, but David, you can't see him. He's not tangible. And I say, that's the point. You're not supposed to. What is infinite? Who is the best of the best? I'm not supposed to see you, right? Now we conceptualize with Jesus being like the human form, but like the epitome of man. All men are religious. When you get on monk mode, God will find you. What does that look like? I call it mission. Mission, God, same thing. Your call to adventure. It's the same essence. It's why you're here. You think like we've evolved this far just by chance? I, I, can't, I cannot believe that. I cannot fathom that we've evolved this far and we're still, whether society's good or bad, the fact that everything just manages to happen. You just manage to wake up. You just manage to meet the right guy at the right time over. When you follow your hero's call to adventure, you go through too many coincidences to believe that life is random, at least in my opinion. So to answer your question, can you do this whole monk mode thing without God? The answer is no, because that is what monk mode is by default. And that is why so many men refuse it because they understand subconsciously. Like I said, all men are built religious. They understand subconsciously they're about to find something. I think Peterson talks about this, right? If you stare into the abyss long enough, you got to be careful. It doesn't stare back into you. Like men know what's in there. Men, men are smart. Men, if there's one thing I've learned these past few years, men are men are weapons. We are so much smarter and capable than like anyone will have you believe and it's it's terrifying to know like the potential and men know that i think there was like a there's a movie court it's like men are not men's biggest fear is what was it it was like a basketball court it's like men's biggest fear is being too competent and being too that's the men i promise you that's one thing i've learned men know it i've coached over a thousand guys men know exactly what they need to do they know what their passions are but it's it's that was my biggest fear actually getting too big that's every man's fear i truly believe it's not failing it's no no, no. getting too big your potential and uh, so I'm kind of ranting on a bunch of things, but no, it will find you. And you know this. Every single man does. And uh, now it's the time to send it because you want to be on the right side of history, man. That's how faith is built, too.
by the so way. So what do you say to people who argue that uh, why do you need a big daddy in the sky mm -hmm. to uh, to give up jerking off and uh, drinking and drugs and playing video games or whatever you're addicted to? Why can't I just do that by the strength of my own will? And, uh, you know, like Nietzsche just suggests, you know, I'm the Ubermensch. I'm just going to have power, will to power. I can do it all myself. Absolutely. So we can kind of break this from, you know, spiritually, biologically, et cetera, et cetera. In the Bible, when you begin to understand it, you realize how much they preach meekness and humility. And I think the reason for that is because mm. even if you think of the seven deadly sins, the first one is pride. And mm. I think that was calculated for a reason. Why of all the seven deadly sins is the, f why is the first one pride? Because I believe if you have pride, like Lucifer did, God cannot speak to you if you have a prideful heart. And I struggle with pride too. I don't care if you're lustful, if you're angry, if you're prideful, God cannot access you. Do you celebrate do uh, Pride Month? Of course not. No. What, what is that? No. <laughs> we, this is a completely different topic. But no, that's that's a complete <sighs> weaponized word, mm -hmm. right? They flip everything. Anything virtuous now is completely flipped. I, I think, again, I learned this from you. Uh, I believe it's, see, I don't even say, I think it's June, right? June's Pride Month. That used to be Father's Month. Mm -hmm. But then what do they do, of course? They flip that with something uh, completely the opposite. So no, you cannot do it yourself. And if you could do it yourself, you wouldn't be watching this video. I had so many guys, you know, even myself, right? I can do it myself. I can do it myself. I say, I'll see you in six months. Go try. And then they do. And they come back and I'm like, you're right, man. I can't do it. And I'm like, you have to submit. You have to submit. Whatever you want to call it. It's your subconscious God, universe, humility. The reason pride is the first of the seven deadly sins is because you will not be guided. How can you? I coach men for a living, as, as do you. Do you want to know who I know is going to go far when you have an open heart? If you're prideful, why would I help you? Let's keep it very practical. Right. No God in the sky. Let's keep it very practical. If I have a guy, right, powerlifting, I don't need your help. I can do it myself. Bet. No problem. Prove it. Show me. The guy's willing to listen, right? Like Jesus' disciples. Just listen. Be open. You'll, t you'll, you'll go magical places, man. That's what I did when I got a monk. I said, hey, man, I haven't done this before. Just help me out. Right? So... What what led you to seek Christ and become a religious man? Great question. So I need to make it very clear. I'm still relatively new in my faith. You know, I don't want to come across as this guy who's, you know, been doing this for decades. No, I'm learning every uh, every bit, every day. But to answer your question, it was monk mode. It just came to me. You know, very interestingly enough, this is the hero's call to adventure. And this is what I believe evolution is. So again, whatever name you guys want to give it, biology, mother nature, I really could not care less. Um, but it's happening. Powerlifting and Christianity found me around two years ago. And when I got on monk mode, it exploded. And do you want to know why? Like I said, for like the fifth time, because you're plugged in. When you were plugged in, pride, God can't access you. So you stopped jerking off and Jesus came and spoke to you? More or less, yeah. <laughs> yeah, more or less. That's what exactly what happened. Well, it's, tell me about that experience. Yeah. So, well, I mean, think about it, right? I, they say this in the Bible too, right? Along the lines, I'm going to bash it a bit, but like God doesn't, you guys might get angry, but like God doesn't listen to sinners. Like if you keep sinning, mm. why would God listen to you? Yeah. But when you stop sinning, Jesus said along the lines, he's like, because I was a perfect man, God was with me the entire time. Something like that, right? So if I stop sinning and I repent, I'm humble, I have humility. God's like, about time, buddy, let's go. Oh, right. I've been waiting to help you. But if you're in sin, you're in pride, right? Which is the first of the seven deadly sins. I do it all myself. Practically and spiritually, no one will help you. Good luck, buddy. You are a son. No matter how far I get, I am still a baby, man. There is so much. That's why I'm speaking to you. There's so much room to grow. If there's one advice I can give you guys, do not ever think you are. How can you be? That's why God is limitless. That's the whole point. Doesn't matter who you are. I don't care if you're Elon Musk, whoever. There is no limit. There's no cap. He's supposed to be in your imagination for a reason, like non-tangible. It's beautiful. I love that. That's what movies are. It's the same thing. It's the hero's call to adventure. They say, yo, but David, Lord of the Rings, ABCD. It's not real. That's the whole point. What don't you understand? The whole point of the hero's call to adventure, right? Star Wars, uh, George Lucas, heavily inspired by Joseph Campbell, which is a very real thing. There's so Stories, religion, stories are so potent because it's almost not tangible anymore. So your imagination has no limit. Where if it tangibly happened, there's dangers to that because now your mind will be... Oh, but he only went this far. Therefore, I can't. There was no limit, though. Dang. And they know this. Like, statistically, like, the first guy to run, like, a two-minute mile, five-minute mile, um, once he did it, I think there was, like, 300 people that did it after him. So, kind of a side tangent, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's really good.
So uh, you're a young entrepreneur. You're, uh, you know, a, you're making yourself your way mm -hmm. as a man. Uh, you've escaped the nine to five. You're making YouTube videos. You're earning money as a coach. You're helping people. In many ways, you're living the life that many 24-year-olds would love to have. In fact, you know, I, I speak to many, 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 many 24-year-olds, mm -hmm. and almost every one of them has a dream to make YouTube videos, impact the world, make money, escape my nine to five. Yeah. What are some of the things that you've done uh, that you could help attribute uh, you're you're relatively new, but budding and growing, and obviously, great success at this point too. Yeah, again, right? Like guys, there's there's one thing you learn is like the higher you go, you realize there's always sure it it never ends. So yeah, what I would say because again, I coach clients with with entrepreneurship as well is one of my favorite quotes by again by a guy named Gary Vaynerchuk is document do not create document don't create meaning. God is a big but David. There's nothing interesting in my life here. I can't really start a self-development page or this or that. And I say, because you're trying to create something. Where are you at right now? You're broke? You're at home? Document that. What are you doing? What are you building? That's my best advice. So if you want to start with entrepreneurship right now, start a self-development page documenting your life. What does that look like? What are you going through? What are your thoughts? What are your revelations? What helped you overcome the next challenge in your life? And that's exactly what I did. That's what we all did, right? Your OG videos were just... Hey, man, I went through a problem back then. You guys had a question. You know what? This is what I did. That's all. You're not, you didn't, in fact, your best videos, right? All of us, the more you try to create something, the worse it does. Mm. Because now what is that? It's kind of like, it's kind of like pride again, right? It's you coming in where when you're just, you let go. Hey, God, what's going on? What, what's my muse saying within me? And you document, here's what I did. Charisma. What do they say? Confidence. Confidentia. The Latin word is to trust. Right? Oh, David, you're, you're charismatic. You come. No, I just trust. You saw me shaking here. I was cold. I was over on caffeine. I was tired. I, then it's okay. It's okay. What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to fake it? You have to be honest. Be open. So document and be charismatic. Be open. But I understand that's hard because of judgment. So on a practical advice, what I would tell you guys is get rid of any degenerate friend you think matrix that you have that is there for you. They're not. The reason I persisted for so long is because I had no friends. More or less my whole life. I was kind of like a black sheep, like I told you, mm. right? So I didn't have anyone to tell me, you know, good job per se. But I didn't have anyone to tell me that's wrong. That's weird. No one. So I'm like, okay, let's go. Right. Right? So you mentioned earlier that, uh, you know, guys like you and I, in a way, can kind of perceive the future in a way. And I agree with you. What does, say, the next five years uh, in our world look like? for men like you and I and and the men that you mentor who are a little bit younger what kind of world are we preparing to step into yeah so man yeah this is something I'm beginning to learn as like as, as I get older right um learning to be like Christ right I think um there's no question about it we're entering how do I put this? It's, it's going to be hard. It's going to be challenging, but I believe we'll win in the end. So you think of a movie, right? All the Avengers are about to fight. Um, I think it's about to get pretty hectic in the next couple of years. And I, number one, first and foremost, want all of you men to be well-equipped for this the best you can. I, I know you live on a ranch, things like that. Amazing. If you can do things like that or grow spiritually, physically, get on monk mode, do it now. You know, I made a real, I said, we're going to war and you still care whether this girl likes you right? Mm -hmm. Get on the right side of history right now. Sharpen your swords right now. So whatever happens, you'll do the best you can. So um, yeah, I couldn't tell you what's going to happen. I think it's going to be, I think Tate says, have nots and have yachts where it's, you're going to be on the wheats and the tares, right? Oil and water, the sheeps and the goats. We're, right now, this is happening, a separation. There's no question about it. I need you guys to get on the right side of history. What do I mean by that? Follow God, man. Follow mission. Improve yourself. I truly believe that. Do not worry about degeneracy. Don't do not be worrying about dating and things like that right now. Now is not the time, and uh, I, I believe you'll be okay if you follow mission and you become based. I can't tell you what's going to happen to you. I don't know if I'm going to, you know, who's going to be alive, who's not. I don't know. I couldn't tell you that. It's all in God's hands. But if you fulfill mission, 
I believe that is the best advice I can possibly give you, regardless of the outcome. So, Do you think a lot of suffering is coming and, and what kind of suffering might that be? Uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of dying from the old. So yeah, hundred percent, man. I think, uh, yeah, hard times are going to come. That's basically what I'm saying. I, I, I truly believe that they already have come the past, you know, few years. And, um, if you are not ready, you will be demolished. There's no question about it. Spiritually, physically, mentally, life doesn't wait for nobody. Evolution. If I understand no your your message, uh, even through the thread throughout this entire conversation, is to embrace suffering. That's what monk mode sounds like to me. It sounds yeah, like yeah. you're willing to go through the pain that's associated with detachment, mortification, and thus strengthening your inner man, because the future is going to either you'll either be prepared for suffering because it's going to happen. Or the suffering is going to be laid upon you and you're just not going to know how to deal with it. Yeah, very well said. That's basically what In a way, is. what you're doing is teaching young men the power of suffering, it sounds like, to me. I guess so, yeah. I, I didn't really think of it that way, but yeah, 100%. Yeah, leave the flesh. Mm -hmm. And it all starts with uh, pleasure and sex. I, I think if I could bring it back to the beginning, as you learn more in Christianity, right, Christ... Or just historical figures, like I said, you realize they didn't really do this just for themselves. So it is definitely a scary thought of like potentially being a martyr, right? And uh, but look, man, here's how I view it, right? There, this is very practical. What's the alternative? This is what I tell myself because I get afraid at times. I think we all do, right? I have doubts, right? New levels, new devils. When you're following monk mode, man, you get attacked spiritually. Devil doesn't like that. What does those attacks look like? Yeah, great question. So spiritual warfare, right? We do not fight against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places, right? I think I I'm sure you said this too. It's not so much tangible guns, A, B, C, D, at least right now, but it's for your soul. There's spiritual warfare. And if there's one thing I've learned these past 10 months, oh, it's real. Yeah. <laughs> it's and real. So what kind of attacks do you uh, encounter? Yep. So <sighs> there... It's hard to decipher what's an attack and what's a test, right? From God and mm -hmm. from what's from Satan. But what I would say to you guys to keep it practical is um, there's going to be a lot of shadow work. When you're on monk mode, Satan knows you. He's studied you your whole life. So he knows your insecurities. And all those insecurities, flaws, fears will just yeah. come on hyperdrive. How, how is that going to look? I couldn't tell you. Your car could break down. You had a financial insecurity. Um your girlfriend leaves you, right? You had an attachment insecurity, but all of that comes. Now, is that a bad thing though? You know what I mean? Like, because right. ultimately if you're coming a stronger man, which I have, so who's to say, is that from Satan? Is that from God? But it's real. hundred percent. There's no question about it. The second I evolve or I take a step or I make a video or I decide, no, this is the path. It's the next evolution. <laughs> so if I understand you subject yourself to physical suffering and thus the soul follows. And so then there's spiritual suffering. So there's suffering on top of suffering. A lot of people think that, oh, I'm going to go into this monk mode and it's going to make my life great. <laughs> I'm going to get rid of all these vices, vices and my, I'm going to skyrocket. It's going to be my come up. Um, but it almost sounds like it's the opposite. In fact, if you begin to bring your flesh under subjection, the spirit is going to be attacked as well. Yeah, well said. See, it's funny because they say you can only connect, connect the dots looking backwards. And that's kind of what I'm doing now as you're saying this yeah. to me, right? Because when you're in the war field, I don't have time to think. I don't have time to kind of like gauge, oh, well, this is why it's happening. It's just, it's just happening. But then why? Why do all this? Why yeah. not just YOLO it up and, you know, smoke weed and have sex and you're going to die anyway? Yeah, great question. Well, number one, I don't want to go to hell. They say the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. And that's something that's really been hitting me as of late. I think men on a very practical level need to bring back judgment. We need to bring back pain. We need to bring back um, hell. Yeah. <laughs> you have to bring back fear of pun hell. punishment. Fear of punishment, fear of judgment. Same thing. But if Jesus is so loving, why would he, <laughs> why would he uh, yeah, judge talk, anyone? Yeah, let's talk about this. This is great. So um, yeah, on a Christian sense, I think that there is a lot of false, there's a lot of uh, BS out there. There's a lot of crap, especially revolving Christianity, as far as the ideas of, you know, once saved, always saved, you know, 
he died, so you're good to go. You can sin as much as you want, go back to your old vomit. And the more I learn on Christianity, the more I realize that that is a lie. That is the farthest thing from the truth. Yeah. To genuinely repent, Christianity, I, I thought for the longest time, you know, I won't go too into depth with this, I thought Christianity was like an easier religion. I thought Islam, these religions were harder as I learned all of them. Mm-hmm. From what I know now, Christianity is the hardest religion oh, yeah. by far. And I, and, I, and I had no clue. I was mm-hmm. like, Especially because it's so hated. You'll be hated like Christ is hated. Absolutely. You're not joining the fun party, yeah. the trendy religion like some guys do. And it's funny because I posted on my story the other day. Um, you guys notice how of all religions, Christianity is the one that gets mocked the most, hated the most. I watch street preachers, Islam preachers, Christianity, Judaism preachers. And I'm seeing this on TikTok now, which is great with the youth are waking up. Why is it just Christianity? Why do the atheists yeah. only attack Christianity? Right. Why? Well, because I believe Satan attacks what's true. Right. So, and that triggers <laughs> so many false people. That's, that's wrong, but it's mm-hmm. fine, guys. You know, study it, study it all. I'm still relatively new to this. I make that very clear, but I would encourage you to study all of them. Study all the Abrahamic faiths, right? It doesn't even have to be Abrahamic. Mm-hmm. So um, look into the attacks on the Catholic church, Christ's uh, OG church, the church that he created by putting Peter as his first Pope. Right. And the infiltration and the, uh, the breakup in the 1500s uh, mm-hmm. and how that all contributes to the splintering of the faith and the destruction of the faith today. We live in like a new age Christianity and that's why you get all like these silly ideas about Jesus not being the judge mm. uh, because everybody's making up their own ideas based on what they think the Bible says. Mm-hmm. But we do have a hierarchy. We mm-hmm. do have institution. There is a body and that is found in his original church. Watch my catechesis. Sure, I will. I absolutely. Series. I'll binge it. I'm not trying this. to convert you. Yeah, yeah. But if you're a seeker of the truth, you'll ultimately end up back at the root. Mm-hmm. Everything else is, in my opinion, new age, and it's well, re- revolution. And revolution is what got us to where we are today. I mean, think about the sexual revolution. Think about the feminist revolution. Think about the French revolution. Even the American revolution is all colored by a uh, rejection of authority. Mm-hmm. And so you might find some interest in that. Absolutely. Yeah, I try to keep it as untainted as possible, right? I find that like the more, a lot of religion is more, it's like what Christ said plus what man said, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of churches. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, there's tradition, apostolic tradition. So anything mm-hmm. that's quote unquote man said in the faith is because they were the apostles mm-hmm. that said that. Okay. And so that tradition is passed on. We don't believe in Bible only. Okay. Because the Bible's just a book, right. divinely inspired. But as Paul says, hold fast to the traditions that I've taught you. Not everything that Paul or even the, the, the disciples or Christ himself said was written down, mm-hmm. because in that time they lived in an oral tradition. And so they spoke and practiced, say, for example, the liturgy. So when you see an Orthodox or a traditional Catholic uh, liturgy, what you're watching is the uh, the form of worship that was present at the time of Christ. Um, if you go to, you know, your run-of-the-mill storefront uh, Christian place, mm-hmm. they're focused more on preaching, mm-hmm. and um, that wasn't the intention of the liturgy. It okay. was worship. Interesting. Uh, yeah, there's a lot to be... And here, here I am also, uh, as a new revert, like yourself, it's only been about three years. Mm-hmm. And so I'm just so fascinated to share all the new shit that I'm learning about Christ and his church and what it means in this day, especially when you we had the conversation about look at what's attacked. Mm-hmm. Well, the Catholic Church is the most viciously attacked. In fact, it's probably the only uh, well-accepted form of bigotry mm-hmm. that uh, that is allowed in the world mm-hmm. because everybody from, well, of course, athe- atheists and uh, secularists and the world itself, but uh, most other Christians attack the crap out of. Okay. Christian yeah, I will definitely, I think it's like, yeah, whatever gets attacked the most, study that. Yeah, that's part of the reason why I like it. I'm like, oh, everybody hates this? Hmm, there must be something there. Yep, that and what, whatever the hardest thing is, like 
it, it kind of just moves right. downwards, right? Like the easier it is, this is kind of just common sense, but the easier it is, the more widely accepted it is. It's like find the very tunnel, find the very last thing and then reverse engineer it. Be like, oh, here's why. Da, 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 da. Yeah, it's very interesting, man. I think uh, Christianity and religion itself is is really beginning to, I think you said zeitgeist. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but I think it's coming back. Sign of the times, Sign where the times. things are going. Yeah, yeah, Christ is gonna call back his remnant and pull us together. And you're definitely a part of that. And, you know, everyone who's seeking, everyone who's searching, we might not have all the answers. I mm -hmm. might not be right. You mm -hmm. might not be right. But we got our eyes open and our hearts open and we're we're leaning into Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's who's calling us home. Amazing. So be on board, too, guys. Yeah. What do you think about uh, Tate becoming a uh, Muslim? Yeah. Great question. Amazing question. I get this uh, actually quite often. So. I think the reason Tate chose uh, Islam is because through Hollywood, Christianity seems like a very pacifist religion, right. right? Everyone makes fun of it. You know, they don't do anything. And I think, you know, a lot of churches are like fake churches. I think they kind of propagate that idea. Man, they're learning LGB, ABC in, in churches now, right? not the based ones. So I think he saw that superficially and was like, you know what, man, I got to go to the seemingly hardest religion, which is Islam and find that because he believes that's the truest religion. But as I'm beginning, and, and for a time, I thought that too. I was like, that on paper, that makes sense, right? Like you don't mock a, a Muslim because they'll, they'll take it to heart and they'll, they'll, they'll rebut or a Christian, ah, you know, whatever. So I thought that too, but I stuck with Christianity. This is when I was new to the faith, even like six months ago. But I was like, no, because a lot of guys were like, David Tate switched. A lot of Muslim followers, you got to switch too. And I'm like, you got to explore your own backyard first, right? Mm -hmm. So I stuck with it. And as I've come to realize and learn more, I'm very glad I did. I think that Tate just wasn't well-informed enough. I think if you look at it superficially through the eyes of Hollywood, of course, that's how it is. But like when you actually mm -hmm. begin to study like word for word, like what they say and what they preach and practice, you realize, no, it could not be farther from the truth. So, hey, each their own, you know, I yeah. do what you want. But I, 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 as of now, I've found... I'm very interested in this. I like wake up with excitement. I'm like a kid on Christmas. Mm -hmm. It's so cool. Like learning more. I'm like, oh, that relates to my life so much. And just as like a final take to you guys, a lot of guys will be like, oh, why do you talk about this? I've come to realize that religion, uh, Christianity in particular, because again, that's that's what I'm studying, is the most practical thing that can change your life as a man. Well, it built the West. Mm -hmm. You know, we take for granted, especially secularists, that, oh, we just have freedom because of, I don't know, maybe the Constitution or something like that. Yeah. All that is built off of Christian principle. Mm -hmm. The entire Western civilization, even the the, the 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 amount of freedom that women have, mm -hmm. I mean, they don't have that in Islam. Mm -hmm. uh, and all of the uh, the removal of, of, of um, slavery. Yeah. You know, all the advances that we take for granted in the West are all because of Christ and yeah. his church. Yeah. The 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 the, the amount of um oh boy, I'm I'm losing it today. Uh wealth, mm -hmm. growth, expansion, power mm -hmm. in the West. Like even the universities and stuff, right? Universities, yeah. hospitals, yeah. charities, yeah. all a byproduct of Jesus Christ. I mean, that's why the West has been so great. The West is the best. Yeah. Yeah. So what I would say to, I know there's a lot of young, uh, young men right now that are kind of split between those two. I feel those are the, I mean, globally, those are the two biggest religions, right? Islam, I believe is like a third of the population. Christianity is like 50% of the population. I would just say, if you're in the West, why not study your own backyard first? I think that's just like the most practical thing you can do. Like I was born a Christian, right? Again, growing up, that meant nothing to me as it does for most people. Like, you know, what does that mean? I never really went to church. My parents didn't really talk about it too much. But I was like, hold up. Before I, you know, go explore ABCD, like let's just see what this is about. And um, I believe it will just call to you. It just called to me. You know, I didn't go seek anything. I was just doing my own thing, mm -hmm. going through life. And just it kept through YouTubers, through individuals. And I was like, let's just see. Yeah. So. Are you, I speak about this quite often, but are you aware of the uh, subversion of the West, particularly of the church uh, through the Marxists in, yeah. you know, post revolution, of course, you know, Bolshevik revolutions, all revolutions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I'm still learning this, but I've, I've watched a lot of yeah. your videos. Yeah. They've infiltrated Hollywood, music, media, yeah. movies, yeah. Um, basically anything that the schools, the government, yeah. um, Basically, all of it has been completely subverted by the enemy. Mm. And there is a an enemy, and they all kind of go by the same name, but we won't say it because we get canceled when we call them out. 
And, uh, and that's why there's such an antichrist spirit in our world. Mm-hmm. We've been completely ideologically subverted and are brainwashed against fathers. Mm-hmm. That means God the Father and uh, you know fathers in our homes. 100%, which I think brings it all back to monk mode, right? Which is like, find that father again, that authority. Because mm-hmm. without that, if you don't have it, there will be no father by default, right? Like mm-hmm. the matrix, which we could say is like matriarchy, mm-hmm. it is the absence of father. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, if you don't seek the father, or at least have an open heart for him to seek you, there will be no father. Where do you see this around? I think that's a big, I think that's why I was so inspired when I saw your videos back in the day, because my dad died when I was 14, so I didn't have that literal father, and and I suffered because of it. So the world needs fathers, right? That's why they, that's why they all watch you. You kind of like started it. I'm here because of you. <laughs> you you kind of sprinkled in everything where it was like, whoa, this sense of masculinity, this objectivity. And as I get older and I coach these younger men, I realize how vital it is what being a father is. Even though I don't have literal children, I treat these guys like they're my, chi- my, my children. And I learn like they're looking for that backbone, th- whether through Christ or literal father figures. And um, yeah, the reason we're in this whole mess is because of the absence of that. So we're definitely bringing that back. Yeah. And so do you pray? Yeah, 100%. I don't know if I pray in like maybe the Catholic sense of, well, Father, I, I don't, I'm still relatively new, but like a hundred percent. How do you pray? Yeah. What do they say? Like behind closed doors, et cetera. I just, even like before this podcast in the car, for me, to me, it's just humility. It's just like, Hey God, Christ, I'm willing to work. Just guide me, you know, just, just help me out. If this is not from you, right. I was getting attacked the other day, man, with like a insane lust, which was very rare. That hadn't happened. And I was like, I ask for two things. Number one, God, if this isn't from me, take it away, right? And then two, ask for revelation. That's what I do. And that, that's really helped me a lot. Like, what do you just, what do you want me to do? I'll do it, right? God's not the author, author of confusion. Just, just tell me though. Just like make yeah. it known to me what to do. No problem. So for me, I think my biggest prayer is, is guide me, thank you, and asking for revelation personally. You're really charismatic. You're on fire right now. And I think you're leading a generation of young men down the right road. Mm. Would you be willing to close our podcast with a prayer? Absolutely. Okay, let's do it. Absolutely. All right. So our <laughs> I've never done this before. All right. This is going to be David Hammond's prayer, okay? Our Father, God, Jesus, can you please touch these men's hearts and find them? Because right now I believe they're yearning for you, but they don't know it's you and they're lost and they're confused. Can you please give them a little bit of objectivity, that nudge to make it clear that it is you for them to then grab onto that as you did for myself and Elliot. If you can do that, I believe more men will take that call to adventure, but they need you to reach out a little bit stronger because they're numbed right now and they're blinded by many vices and it's very hard for you to reach them. I think they want to meet you, but they just don't know how. So if you can just nudge a little bit harder for them, just in the beginning at least, for them to know it's you, that's my prayer. Amen. Amen. And Heavenly Father, I love you. I bless you. I appreciate you and everything that you brought into my life and those in my life. In particular, I appreciate you bringing David Hammond into my life. And I think he's going to be a light for your word and for your mind and for your life through us. And I pray that you continue to guide him and enlighten him and give him strength and your grace to do great things in this world, to bring your flock back home to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. David, this has been great. Oh, thank you so much, A lot of fun with you, kid. This was awesome. All right, guys. That's it. That's all. We're done. It was a great show. Until next time, I'm out, yo. Peace. If you're a high-achieving businessman, executive, or entrepreneur who's dominating in business but struggle with drinking, drugs, overeating, or any filthy vice, here's some advice. The biggest mistake that you could make is to try to quit cold turkey and use willpower to overcome your cravings. If you've ever quit for a few days or a few weeks, only to self-sabotage by binging worse than before, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. Not only has my company helped thousands of men destroy vice and dominate life, I personally confronted and overcome the same struggles when I found myself hooked on weed at the peak of my business career. If you've got four minutes to listen to a coach who will help you achieve total self-mastery and control over your inner punk, then listen up. If you don't beat drinking, drugs, or any life-draining dependency in 90 days or less, 
Not only will my company give you your money back, we'll pay for your first month's stay at a rehab retreat of your choice. That's what you need to succeed. So let's go, bro. Just visit waronvice.com, fill out an application, and my team will get back to you with the details. Hope to see you on the inside. Done.